Hey, 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 we're on. You'll have to turn that speaker off, Carol. Welcome to the Bailey workshop. Oh, I didn't put the t-shirt on. <laughs> See, that's why you have an intro. I told him, I said, like, you've only got a minute. It's like, <laughs> no intro know. today. You. Caught me out, didn't you? Oh, <laughs> right, welcome to the workshop. The penny dropped this week. This is what happened this week. This arrived in the post. So yes, for those of you that are our regulars, you'll know that I've been building this guitar for the last two weeks, uh, this body. I've been showing you how to make a body if you have a pre-existing neck. Um, so that's, um, I might put that into a little playlist for you to make it a bit easier to find. But um, yes, it was named again by the internet. <laughs> I think the, the last two guitars that I've made have both been named by the internet. Um, I'll talk a bit more about Lockdown Lucy later, but um, but this is Penny. The reason it was called Penny was because one of our viewers noted that the penny dropped when was he was Russ? watching. Was it Russ? Ah, uh, Russ. Noticed that the, um, mentioned that the penny had dropped while he was watching um, one of our live streams. Obviously made some sense to him. And the penny dropped. So then the guitar got nicknamed Penny. And then this arrived in the post just uh, the day before yesterday. It's an old penny. <laughs> Look, it just came in the post with no letter. So I don't know which one of you guys sent it. Um, oh, Tony Vince, there you go. Oh, did you not read it? <laughs> it says contact information. Uh... So that's, that's the only thing it says. Look, I tell you, they're missing a trick though. 99p it cost, this penny. <laughs> Don't you think it should be a pound? What, for a penny? Yeah, in for a penny, in for a pound. That should be their slogan. I'll give you that for free. In for a penny, in for a pound. So anyway, what we're going to do today is, by popular demand, <laughs> I'm actually going to inlay this into, into this neck. Um, we could do it into the body, but... Um, I want to use the body as an example um, on our finishing course, which we're currently working on. Um, so I'm going to put it in the neck. We're also using the neck on our finishing course as well, but it's a bit easier to do it in the neck. So we're going to do that. And I think it looks pretty cool on there anyway. I think it looks better on the neck than on the, um, on the body myself. Mark, James Perry thinks, still thinks you should have called it Dave. Like the <laughs> okay. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is just stick it on, temporarily fix it on with a bit of, um, I mean, any glue would work. I'm just going to use a bit of tight bond. Um, I want to use something that's going to be reasonably quick so I can do it in a live stream. Um, but I don't want it to, um, I don't want it to grip too firmly because it's a temporary fix. So I'm not going to use super glue this time, just a bit of tight bond. Um, and we're going to leave that for five minutes just to glue there, just to dry. Um, Mark, can I tell you that um, yeah, TV101 says uh, he's really upset that it gave the game away because uh, <laughs> he, was gonna, he was hoping you were going to have a competition and he was going <laughs> to be able to guess the year <laughs> and win a prize. Right, That's well, it's 1963. Did you have your mic on? No, you didn't, Carol. Nobody heard that. I probably well did have my mic on. Did you? Oh, yes, well done. Well, well done. 1960... 1963. There you go. Um, Clint's... Um, um, hi. Aloha. Um, Hawaii. So how, how old did, would that make you? Somebody work it out for us. Um, he, Clint's um, saying, don't forget the string trees. Is it going to be in the way of any string trees? Very well said. Good point. Yes, so I did consider that actually when I was thinking about where I'm going to put it. And um, what I decided was um, to put it there. I reckon I can get a couple of string trees in. One there and one there. But if I can't, what I could do is use staggered height tuners. So I was considering maybe using a nice set of staggered height tuners and then we won't need any string trees at all. 
So that solves that problem. Rock and roll, in for a penny. <laughs> right, so I'm gonna stick that there and give it five minutes to dry. Whilst I just wanna mention, while we're on the subject of post, um, <clears throat> yeah, thanks by the way to all our amazing delivery drivers who are basically, they're keeping the country going at the moment, aren't they? So massive thanks to all those guys who are um, uh, delivering our stuff and then taking your stuff away for you. Um, what would you do without them? Well, but I what I do you... want to say is, oh, this is the important thing before she interrupts me again. Ooh. The important thing is we're running out of time before Christmas. We're only small, there's only a few of us here and um, we can only fulfil so many orders before Christmas. And I already know I've got a feeling that some people are going to be disappointed unless you get in early because I don't think we can possibly meet the demand that we're currently faced with. So um, if you are considering getting any uh, of our stuff for Christmas, whether it be a, um, a pre-made fretboard just to get you going or some router cutters or the full on guitar making kits, um, then it would be great if you could get your orders in early and that would give us the best possible chance to get it to you in time for Christmas. So we're gonna talk a bit more about that on coming Wednesday at 1 p.m. on our next live stream. So I'm not gonna go on too much about that, but just bear that in mind, folks. Um, the crunch is coming. Um, oh yeah, and Steve McKeever, isn't it, Carl? So um, one of our regulars, Steve McKeever, in our early live streams, heard me say that, um, yeah, he heard me say that I needed a new vice. And so he sent me, <laughs> he sent me um, enough cash so that I could buy myself a new vice. <laughs> and here it is. So I just want to say thank you to, um, to Steve McKeever. Here it is. Now, if you are buying a vice, this is the kind that I recommend. It's got this um, attachment here, you see, so that you can attach it onto any table or bench. It works anywhere. Um, so you don't have to spend a fortune on a vice. Um, just something basic like this is perfect. It's taken me ages to get one, though, because they were out of stock. So um, got mine from Axminster, Woodworkers Vice, back in stock. I'm not affiliated to any of these people, by the way, in case you're wondering. But um, yeah, new vice, woohoo! So uh, I'm gonna probably line this with cork, or I might make um, an insert that I can uh, make a removable insert for this. But you don't need anything spectacular. Just something like that is plenty good enough for making guitars. The reason I like these kind of vices is because they stick up above the bench and um, you know, can put your necks in. You can pretty much do anything you want, very as long nice. as it's lined with cork. So thank you, Steve McKeever, for that. It's very, it's and the newest looking thing. I know, it's a bit oily. I've got oily fingers now, look. James <laughs> Bissett said it's the same one he's got. Oh, look, I wish I'd swept up. Never mind. Nobody saw that, did you? <laughs> Greasy fingers. So, um, well, Eddie Cameron's saying, is it heads or tails? Well, we went for the side where you can see the date, which is tails. <laughs> yeah, because we're not having the Queen's I head. guess I should have put heads on the headstock, eh? But um, I went for tails because I thought it was more important that you could see the date. Oh, so Mark, uh, just in case, you it's, know. It's 57, is that date, and there's an awful lot of people in the chat saying that it's a good year. It's a good year, right, so if you're 57, and you want to get hold of this guitar, <laughs> at some point when we've finished spraying it, it's going to become part of our finishing course. Um, so I don't expect this guitar to be finished before Christmas, um, but hopefully it'll be sprayed before Christmas and become part of our finishing course. But uh, I'll probably be assembling it sometime in January. Um, so yeah, subscribe and click the link and the icon and all that if you want to be informed about, about that. And yeah, all the guitars that I make, by the way, I either have to sell them or I have to eat them. So if you're interested in buying any of these guitars, do get in touch. <laughs> oh, I need that, don't I? Well, Mark, uh, there's a couple of people interested in the shiny walnut one. Um... 
Oh, the shiny walnut one's not for sale, I'm afraid. Uh, that was a custom. So I also, I will make you a guitar, a custom guitar to order, if that's what you want. Um, well, so before I carry on, I just want to say one more thing, Carol. Okay. Um, is, uh, I'll just introduce you to the forum, guitarmaking.co.uk. There is a free forum. If you're interested in guitar making, then head over there and you can join up for free and see what we're all getting up to. All us naughty guitar making revolutionaries that are in the chat there are also um, reside in the forum on the site. Um, and if you've got any problems with your build, uh, then head over there and we'll see if we can sort you out. Um, I just want to shout out in particular to um, to our James, um, who has recently been putting up a lot of posts about his misadventures. <laughs> oh, well, we love to share your misadventures as well. Um, but um, but just to prove that the course does actually work, he also just put a, another post up called um, "Independent Proof That Mark's Course Does Actually Work." So yeah, head over there and you can see some of his more successful builds as well as his less successful ones. Brilliant. So I, I think he might be a bit quick to call them firewood. Yeah, yeah. Basically, if you're building a guitar, there's nothing that you can do um, that is terminal, really. I mean, well, you have to really do something real bad to make it terminal. Um, there's usually, 99% of cases, there's something that you can do. And that's what we're here for if you get stuck. So yeah, thank you again to our new members. PB, I think that was today was our latest member. PB, I'm going to call you Pebo. Pebo. <laughs> Pebo is our latest member. And that was a gift PB. from his, um, from his um, good-natured lady wife. So thank you for that. <laughs> you can also buy it as a gift. Um, so PB is now a, a premium member which means that he gets access to all our online courses, which is um, basically design and build, step-by-step -step guide, starting with a blank sheet of paper, going right through the process until you've got a finished instrument. Don't take my word from it. Head over to the website, have a look at the forum, see what other people are doing, and then um, the world's your oyster. Um, yeah, get your orders in as soon as possible. And um, I think we're, we are busy at the moment, but I think we're pretty much caught up. If you are waiting for a parcel, then um, I think it's pretty much on its way. So um, be patient. It's on its way. And um, yeah, we're going to do our best for you before Christmas, but get your orders in early. Right. So I think that's had pretty much long enough. Just one more thing. If you've got any questions um, about this procedure, then... Uh, Make sure you um, leave them in the comments. And uh, if you let me get a word in edgeways to ask them, then he'll answer them. Ca Carol will be shouting out your <laughs> questions <laughs> and operating the master controls. So if you've got any questions, put them in the comments. Carol will shout them out and I'll do my best to answer them. If we don't get to them today, then head over to the forum and you can ask again there and we will get to them at some point. Brilliant. So we're ready to do this inlay, but Carol's already started to heckle me. So, Carol, you've got your hand up. I want you to have my hand up for hours, right? So, um, well, first of all, James Perry said that the wood burner was pretty terminal. Yeah. Oh. I've got to clean this bag of crystal. Yes, That's a the first problem we had was, um, was actually our fault. We sent out the wrong fitness <laughs> neck blank, which is a lesson, isn't it? We do try to get everything right, but it's always worth checking before you start. Um, yes, so that's an, an aside. guitar making, um, it can be it can be heartbreaking, um, but you kind of have to develop a thick skin and you just have to kind of get on with it. If something does go wrong, the best thing to do is to put it down and walk away from it. Even better, come back the next day, it never looks half as bad as it did. I trust, trust me. Ask me how I know. You know, I was just listening to Red yesterday and they said anybody who says, if someone says trust me, you shouldn't intuitively not trust them. So anyway, um, right, next Don't thing trust is me then. T Head over to the website and find out for yourself. Well, TB10101 said that he, but, he said, but the finishing course was happening in November. Like, I'm doing his tone of voice. Um, he, he sounded like <clears throat> slightly wobbly throat. But the 
Finishing course. The finishing course is happening. It's happening as we speak. Um, this is example number one. So it's filmed. It's currently in editing. Um, I'm hopefully hoping to get it to you before Christmas. Um, but as I said, we're filming it in November and now I'm currently editing it. So I'll get it out to you as fast as I can. Probably section by section as it's done rather than waiting until the whole thing's finished, all right? But it's gonna be up in a basic form, which I'm then gonna to add to. So we're gonna add example two, three, and four, at least four different examples on the finishing course. Um, but that will be more likely to be January and February and then onward, because there are so many different versions and examples. We could be doing examples forever. Um, yeah, I've got a lot to get through, so um, tune in. Right, Mark. So subscribe um, and all that stuff. Matt, uh, Matt Tobon over in Denver and Eddie Cameron down in Cornwall um, are asking what glue are you using for Penny? Right. Well, I've just temporarily fixed it on because I'm going to inlay it in a minute. Um, so. In the end up, I'm going to be using an epoxy glue, more than likely. But f for this job, just I just temporarily fixed it on, um, just with tight bond. I could have just used white PVA glue. Any glue would do, to be honest. Not important. What is important is that we can get it off afterwards, because it's a temporary one. I'm just gluing it on temporary. Because I'm going to... I'm going to inlay it into, uh, into this headstock here. So <clears throat> inlaying is a, uh, well, normally it's a two-stage operation. What we do is we stick the, the thing on and then we scribe around it. So we mark its location. I'm actually cutting through the top layers of the wood. Then we take the penny off and then I remove the wood in between using a Dremel or a miniature router. I'm going to route out the wood underneath. And then we would, if this was a normal inlay, it would usually be mother of pearl. We would glue it in with it stand, standing flush. And then when the glue is dry, we would sand it flush. Sorry, we would glue it in with it standing proud. And then we would sand it flush and spray over it. In this case, I wanted to do something a little bit different. I mean, obviously, if I inlay that so that it's standing proud and then sand it flush, we're going to rub off, off all the details. So I don't want to do that. Um, I actually thought originally what I would do is inlay it plenty deep enough so that I could bury it in lacquer. and then polish it up and then that, that would preserve all the detail. But I thought maybe I would like um, make the penny go shiny, you know, put it in a glass of Coke overnight and make it go shiny. But then I thought we'll keep the vintage look. Let's not make it look brand new because it isn't brand new. None of us are brand new, are we? Let's face it. So let's leave it the vintage look. And I thought what we'll do with the wood is we'll, we'll also, um, We'll put a vintage amber on the wood as well to make it look like an old, you know, an old neck. You know how they kind of go sort of yellowy with age? That's amber and um, that's what I'm going to do with this neck. So eventually it's going to be sprayed with an amber to make it look vintagey. I thought we'll, we'll, leave the, um, we'll leave the penny looking tarnished. And what I'll also do is I want to have the penny sticking up proud. So I'm only going to inlay it about halfway in so that it actually sticks out proud. And I'm not going to sand it flush afterwards. I'm just going to glue it in and leave it like that. So it's a bit of a weird way to go about things. Um, if you want more of a, a traditional st standard inlay um, type affair, I did a live stream on that actually, where we made and inlaid a proper mother of pearl inlay. So have a look on the guitar making YouTube channel and you'll see that. Um, but I also have in the process, in the works, a full on inlay course coming. 
Um, but yeah, there's only one of me. We can only do so much. Um, if we get enough premium members, if everybody keeps joining up and it carries on, but we'll get you then maybe we'll get me cloned, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but maybe one day we could um, employ an editor or something so that we can get more films out better, faster. So bear that in mind. Um, it's our premium members that are actually keeping us going at the moment because obviously we're gigging musicians. That can't happen at the moment. And people used to come to my workshop from all over the world for face-to-face, -face, build your own workshop courses. That's not happening at the moment. So here we are busking for a living again on YouTube. I feel like a teenager again. <laughs> Don't look like one. Cheers, Carol. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so let's get on with it. So I'm going to use a pokey thing to mark around the outside. You might wonder why I'm not using a scalpel. The reason I don't use a scalpel is because a scalpel is more likely to follow the lines of the grain, believe it or not. And so you can end up, obviously it depends on the wood, it's more likely to happen with rosewood. But as you're scribing round, the, um, the blade will hook onto a piece of grain and then you'll end up cutting down the grain. That can happen. It's much less likely to happen if you use a point instead of a blade. So in this case, we're going to use a pointy thing to scribe around the outside. Nice and gentle. I could go around with a scalpel afterwards, once I've cut through that top layer of grain, but I wanted to mark it a bit deeper. But yeah, stage one, stick it on and mark around it. Don't forget to put your questions in the comments, folks. And Carol will be shouting them out. TV 101's had an idea. So, if only I had a drill that was exactly the same size as this coin, and I could have just popped a drill in there, but I measured it and it's 31 point something mil. 30.78. How inconsiderate, a smaller so penny. Yeah, you'd think they could have. Um, <laughs> Made it exactly 30 mil or something. But anyway, I guess they didn't have mil back then, did they? <laughs> back in 1963. Um, so we could go around, like I say, with a scalpel to make that a bit deeper if we wanted, but it's much less likely to slip now. <clears throat> Might as well do it now, I've said it. Yeah, everybody be quiet. Shh. <laughs> Concentrate. <laughs> right now we need to get that off. I should have plugged this in a minute ago, shouldn't I? I've got um, this iron. It does heat up really fast though, so. It's fine. We'll have a swig of tea. Have we got any questions while the iron's heating up? No, but uh, apparently Tony Vin, TV101 is going to start a thread. 100 more ways that Carol could help. <laughs> got my eye on him. I'm into that. BDI, yeah. Sounds like a plan. Taser, Eddie. That's all I can say to yeah, that's already getting hot, I can feel it. Is that my iron? I don't have an iron. It was once. It's a joke, but I don't have an iron. Right, this is going to be a lot easier than if it was Mother of Pearl. If this was Mother of Pearl, I'd have to be real careful um, not to break it. 
but I doubt if I'm going to break this, am I? And I'm going to use something basically just to heat it up and that should make the glue release. And a bit of luck. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm going to actually, um, I'm not actually going to glue this in today. I'm just going to do the inlay. There we go. And then um, I would like to inlay it actually um, after the, the guitar sprayed with its vintage amber. Then I'm going to glue the inlay in afterwards, like the last thing. So if we add a pencil, what we could do is make some dust and then hopefully that will stand out a bit clearer so you guys can see it. Maybe I'll go around with a pencil. <clears throat> so, yeah, brilliant, you can see that. So here's the tools that I'm going to use then. If I just zoom out a bit. A Dremel. I'm going to use, um, that's the biggest cutter I've got, which is an eighth of an inch. I'm going to use that one. And you're going to need to, a base for your Dremel. There is a better base actually with a plunge router, adjustable height. Mine's, um, mine's a bit awkward to adjust the height, but it does the job. It screws into there and then it makes your Dremel into a miniature router. Fantastic. Oh, we're on the wrong bloody camera. I've been showing it to the wrong camera, Carol. Nobody noticed. <sighs> I'm going to sack the cameraman. Cameraman, you're sacked. Get your coat. <laughs> Mark, there's a guy from Eastern, Eastern Canada, B Power, he's never watched before. He says Sorry about that, B Power. He's, he's plucking up the courage, the confidence to build his first guitar. Go for it. What would we all say? We'd say go for it, wouldn't we? If this idiot can do it, anybody can do it. When I'm doing this kind of job, I do like to sit down so that I can be more at eye level with it. Let's put some health and safety on. Goggles. Camera works amazing today, Carol. Do you want me to stick a brief? Right. Honestly. Oh, I'll do it. Anyway, also hello to Muff Evans. He said he what he went he came to the Cheltenham Guitar Show. Wow! And watched you carving that. an arch top uh, inside an arch top dish. No way! I don't even remember that. <laughs> no, but the festival was great, wasn't it? I remember Cheltenham. Yeah. Did we go there more than once? Yes, we, I think we went twice. It only I think it only went to, ran twice. But our our little stand was amazing because we had a side room and we had it was an ensuite stand, wasn't it? Because we actually had a shower room and a, a toilet. So I can set my depth here, go as deep as I want or as shallow as I want. I want to go maybe, uh, I want my coin to be sticking up slightly proud. Because it's going to be a special feature. So maybe just slightly less shallow than that. I go about three quarters of the depth of the coin I think. This one I've got adjustable thumb wheels here to set the depth. It's a bit awkward, but hopefully. So it's still a bit deep. I'm going to make it a little bit shallower than that.
there we go so we'll have the coin just sticking up a little bit lovely I guess if we went too deep I could always cut a piece of veneer and just glue it in just to lift the coin up a bit if I wanted so let's see if we can get an angle where you can see what I'm doing uh, let's try number three as well Let's try. Getting just a bit closer. Ah, oh, just went off. You just faded to black. Didn't? Oh, it's me. The the glue bottle fell onto the button. <laughs> it wasn't me then. It wasn't me then. It wasn't you, no. Thank you. You're exonerated. You can relax. Here we go. What I'm going to do is take the middle out first and then very carefully get to the edge and do the edges until it fits. If in doubt, stop, because it's very easy to go over the line without realising that you've gone over the line. So I'm going to keep stopping and clearing the dust away so that I can see where I am. Let's have a bit more light. I just want to say this shows basically what guitar making is all about it's about um, removing material until you've got what you want left so um, a lot of these jobs it's about finding where I need to remove the material and then removing the material so it sounds it sounds silly but there's only really two skills involved that is finding where you want to remove the material and then removing the material so there's a lot of these jobs are like that like carving the neck and 
um, routing and all them things. You just remove the material. Uh, you need to know what to do, how to do it and when to stop. And that's what the courses are all about. I go into every detail about all that kind of thing. But you can, I can, um, I can um, demonstrate the, the principles just in a simple job. It's about finding out where you need to remove the material and then removing that material. And depending on what job you're doing and how much material you want to remove depends on what tool you're using. That's guitar making in a nutshell. Carol, you've got a question. Well, there's a few which, if you would just pause whilst you answer these. Yeah. Is that okay? So, um, Louis Kedjhovi says, um, is that a, 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 did you make the bass plate for your Dremel? Um, but James Bissett reckons it's a Stumac precision router guide thingy. Yes, it's a Stumac precision router guide bought. Okay. Um, there's a new version now, which is a, a plunge router style, which is better, but it's more expensive. So, um, also go on, then, shout the questions, Carol. Yeah, okay. What Ra Raoul Shooton, who's Mark, he's just come in from the pub, <laughs> he's been out to the pub to see a punk band tonight. God, it's all right for some, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and anyway, we're not allowed out at the moment. There's we're no on pubs full open. lockdown. There's no pubs open. Anyway, so he's asking, what kind of a, what kind of a bit are you using in the Dremel? Um, I'll take it out and show you in a minute, but it's a it's a one eighth inch size. Um, down cut spiral bit, especially for inlaying. A uh, down cut lives a finer cut. It's got like a down shear on it, so it tries to push the wood down as it cuts, rather than an up shear, which would try and lift it as it cuts, and that's that would leave a really furry edge. This leaves a nice clean edge. Give me a second, Carol. You can still shout out questions. Oh, I can I'll hear stop. the questions. So I'm trying to decide where it needs material removed from and then I'm removing the material. See? Simple, isn't it? Almost in. I think it's just catching just there on this edge. Just there, obviously. This is where your guitar maker's eye kicks in. Um, sometimes what you can do is put the inlay back in place and you can actually remark around it again if you need to. I don't want to force it in because I might not ever get it out again without doing some damage. These kinds of jobs are worth taking a bit of time over, aren't they? Nobody's in any rush. It's almost in, look. Right, one last go and we're in.
Let's just find out where the best place to get take it from is. Oh, see, it's gripping. I don't want to force it in because I might do some damage taking it out. clean off that pencil so we can see what it looks like there we are I was aiming to get this grain line here in line with this So I think that will look quite nice. Oh, I can't actually see that. Camera three. I was aiming. Can't see it, can you? Yeah. There's a piece of grain line going through the penny there, look. Who's that? On the penny? That's Britannia. Right, well, Britannia's whatever she's sitting on there and standing on it's in line with that bit of grain which I think looks pretty cool what I've done is I've unlaid that penny so that it's just slightly sticking up proud can you see that? that's what I'm aiming for nice I think it'll look nice when it's got the finish on it and um, the penny's just sticking up a little bit so people will be able to touch the penny you know and actually touch the penny rather than the um, the finish on top of it I think that's nice, actually touching the penny. Touch the penny! Touch the penny, people! <laughs> Everyone is going to want to touch the penny. TV says uh, penny's in the hole. Yeah, penny's in the hole. Right, so, penny's in the hole. Um, I'm not going to actually glue it in like I say. What I'm going to do is I'm going to spray the guitar, I'm going to spray it a nice vintage amber, I think, and then I'm going to um, glue the penny in. It's actually a bit tight, it shouldn't really be that tight. Um, it should be a drop fit, because we don't want to force it in. Like I say, I might damage it getting, the, getting it out. But I didn't want to waste any more of your time. It's maybe a little bit on the tight side, but it's good enough as long as we can get it out without doing any damage. I could maybe take a bit more out around that side. So we're going to have a last round of questions. Carol? I'm, I'm, I'm asking. Go on then. No, I'm asking then. There we go, look at that. So that should drop out now. Still a bit tight. What we're looking for ideally is a drop fit. Questions, yeah. Because um, I know that there's We're some in. people who are watching. There we go. Aren't in the chat. Absolutely beautiful. Look at that. And then it's still still not dropping out, but you get the idea. I don't want to take any more out because it's such a good fit. 
Um, I can get that in and out without damaging the wood, so I'm happy with that. Lovely. Or damaging the penny, in fact. Lovely jubbly. So when I'm spraying this, I'll probably mask that up in there. Keep it clean. And then we can take off the masking tape and glue that in. With a bit of epoxy, I think. Epoxy resin will glue that in. Probably could use super glue. But... And that is that. Um, last round of questions then, Karen, we're done. Well, there's actually some Guys, let me know what you think about um, having no intro. Uh, I kind of like showing a little film at the start because it gives us a chance to put my T-shirt on and that sort of thing. <laughs> oh, so unprofessional. I can't have a bath in the five minutes it takes to play a film, Carol. Oh, I thought you meant... I already Sorry. had a bath. Yeah, normally. Okay, um, Mark, Muff... Three em a week now. Muff Evans... I'm up to three a week. See, the reason you don't get any questions... Go on, shout a question out. Muff Evans says, what colour hardware are you going to go with? Um, your choice. <laughs> I'll let you decide. And um, Eddie Cameron says, you're very brave to Dremel freehand like that. Respect. Well, that, the method I showed you there, you can use to inlay anything, basically. Um, it doesn't have to be a round penny. It could be a... Um, I actually inlaid uh, somebody's pendant into a neck recently. Um, Carol, ask another question while I go and find that. Go on. <laughs> no. I found it. Look, this is an, another thing that we inlaid. It's not round, but we used exactly the same technique. This is a silver pendant that used to hang around somebody's neck. And I chopped the little loop off the top that went through, the chain went through. I chopped that off. And um, this is the guy's logo, um, Carl Bridgman, if you're interested in who it is. Carl Bridgman, um, best bass player on... In Christendom, awesome bass player. Uh, he actually built most of it himself on the course and we're finishing it off for him because of the lockdown. So there's another inlay. It doesn't have to be round, any shape. Could be any shape you like. Um, yeah, if it was a mother of pearl or abalone, then there is another video where I showed you how to finish that off, glue it in and actually finish it off. So check that out on the playlists. Um, okay, so t I just want to tell you that Tony Potter, do you remember Tony used to tune in right at the back, beginning of lockdown from Australia? Oh yeah, um, Tony he's, Potter. Yeah, yeah, he's been really busy. Tony. He's been really busy. He's had a bit of a nightmare year with work. Hi Tony. Um, but he's back in the house, so that's nice, isn't yeah. it? A um, couple of questions, um, Louis and... We had a um, message as well, didn't we? From Louis and... Um, you do this all the time. You do it to me all the time. <laughs> Right, so Muff... I'm going to turn the camera around in a minute. Right, will you stop? Right. <laughs> Louis, Muff and um, someone else asked about different coloured um, hardware. Um, and we're talking about, like, like um, I think Muff was asking about, is there copper coloured? Louis asked, is there pink? Um, <laughs> yeah, the basic hardware colours are, that we all know and love, is chrome black and gold but I've seen green yeah. and we've got some green tuners that we've got Carol for her base and um, there are copper coloured ones rose gold um, you just have to hunt around on the internet not all manufacturers make all the different colours and you'll probably end up you know for a weirdo colour you're going to end up paying a premium but yeah there is a world out there of different hardware colours, um, including your more unusual ones, like a copper coloured one. Yeah, and I mean, the other, the other thing as well is that, that um, as I know to my cost from um, 
trying to source stuff is that you might find something in one color but then find it really hard to match all of the hardware you yeah good you point so it. yeah you have to be careful if you find a really nice set of tuners it's a weirdo color you might not be able to get your jack socket um jack socket plate screws um, and whatever other hardware you need for your guitar make sure you can get it all to match otherwise um you might end up with a weirdo set mismatched. Yeah, I mean, Sometimes that can look cool though as well. It just depends. I mean, just for example, um, I tried really hard. Try and get a. You can buy um, what they call relic. You know, there's there's been a real there was a real popular thing in relic parts, right? Um, but um, it was really hard to. I wish you could see his face. I wish you could see her face at the Goodness moment. Sake, well, right, no come on, for me. questions. I hate standing here with the camera pointing at me. Okay, listening so to Eddie, you Cameron, talk. Eddie Cameron says, is it possible to do a follow guide routing with, with a Dremel? Um, do they make guide bearings that small? No, they don't make them that small. So you're doing it by hand. There are machines, like an engraving machine, which kind of looks like a sketchograph machine of old, where you've got a pin on one side, and a cutter on the other side, and they both move together. So you have your, your workpiece over here being cut and a pattern over here being followed. We used to have one of them in the factory to do fretboard inlays, um, but most people aren't gonna have that. And so the best method is just to do it by hand like that, like I showed you. Okay, James Perry says he's got a half-baked idea to inlay fossils into a guitar. What could possibly go wrong? Yeah, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Try it in a bit of scrap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always recommend whatever you're going to do, do a test piece first and see what it looks like. And, and then if it looks good, then you're laughing, aren't you? Oh, I'm going to say thanks to Matt Tomon for reminding people that uh, we didn't, that, that not everybody liked. Because um, it does help, doesn't it? It's not, yeah, it's not make sure to click thing. the like button. If there's something that you found useful, um, because we're never going to take over the planet unless you guys help us out um, and tell YouTube that it's worth watching, oh, if it should be worth watching. Okay. Yes, so, apart from Mike Abbott. No, no I'm laughing because Mike, Mike Abbott says that all his parts are relics, so that... Yeah, none of us are getting any younger, are we? No. Let's face it. No. Okay. Um, right, so we had a message this week, didn't we not, Carol? Do you want me to read it out, Mark? Yeah. Okay, so uh, the message says, uh, first of all, I want to thank you for everything you have done, Mark and Carol. Your YouTube channel enabled me to deliver a nice technical drawing of my guitar to my teachers yesterday. They were very impressed with my work. I want to thank Mark for, for that. Also, yeah, thanks to Carol who brings the questions that I have to Mark during the live streams. Without you, my thesis for school would not have been possible. Thanks a lot, Louis Kerchovi. Yay! Wow, thanks Louis. Thanks for taking the time to letting us know, let us know as well, because it does, it means the world to us, um, you know, that people are out there actually getting some benefit out of this and, you know, we're not just having a big row for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Louis, and well done. And did you notice, Mark, though, that the, the, the really important part is that Louis used the design course um, to create this drawing and like I was saying to you before we went live, but what's it, the very first course was the design course before we had any other builds at all. And it was amazing what people could build just from that, wasn't yeah. it? That without even the tuition. Yeah, so I mean, the design course is all about, if you're going to build a guitar, you need to know um, where all the bits go and make sure everything's in the right place. Otherwise it won't play very well. It might look beautiful. But we're not just making pictures, we're making a tool. I think of myself as a tool maker. The guitar is a tool for making music. So brilliant. Well done, Louis, and thanks again for letting us know. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, earlier on, yeah, the, B the, Power um, in the, Canada was saying that he didn't, he didn't, he was building up the confidence, didn't have the confidence to build. But the thing about the design, doing a design, is you just need a table and a bit of paper. And yeah, it's it's actually good practice for when you are going to build. Um, if you're doing a design, then you're marking out, which is that's that's half the skill of building is the marking out. You you can only build as accurate as you can mark out. 
So doing a drawing as a design process is a decision-making process because it makes you go through all the decisions that you need to make in order to make your dream guitar or whatever it is, ukulele or bass. Um, using the design course, you can design anything you want. There's about five and a half hours of material there that you can follow it through step by step or you can dip in and out of for the bits you need. Um, but yeah, we think it's probably worth the, the membership fee just for the design course alone. And that's design your own electric. But we also have design your own acoustic and then of course the full on build your own courses which follow on from the design courses. Um, so you do your design and then that tells you what all what patterns you need to make and uh, and then you go on from there to actually build the guitar. But marking out is, you know, doing your drawing and your design, that's your decision making and getting everything in the right place. That's the important bit, isn't it? And understanding. I and mean, we've we've run lots of one-to-one um, -one sessions. Yeah. It's, so when you way. when you do design your own guitar, then you get a really good understanding of how guitars work and what and what they're all about. Yeah. So, Matt, yeah. Matt Beals is um, online from Germany, and he's saying he did some drawing last night, and it's so much fun. It is, isn't it? It's it's a really interesting. It is. And yeah. And once you've designed thing. one, then you get the process into your head. Then you can design as many as you want. Design ten guitars, a hundred guitars, um, and yeah, there is no one perfect design. <laughs> We're still looking. If you think you've found it, let us know. Well, and um, and also, you know, the, the 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 thing that sometimes people have been paid, not paid. They've bought they've bought it as a gift to come and um, spend one to one <coughs> time with you or on Zoom doing a design session. And, um, and, you know, we've been talking about the penny dropping today, and that's when it fills in it, even some quite experienced modders and techie people doing the design. It fills in lots of gaps, doesn't it? Yeah, it does fill in lots of gaps for a lot of people. Um, even We get even professional people who work in shops and stuff come on the course. Um, so, yeah. So, anyway, enough of the sales pitch, Carol. I'm not doing any more sales pitch, that's no, it. No, but I've, um, got one more, I've got two more things to say. Questions, then, quick. No. Not questions. Would well, you want to come this side and no, say? No, I it? do not. Right, because my face. We'll spit it out then. Oh, come on, spit it you're out. You're in trouble. Right? Quick. So we had another message to, this week, didn't we? Go on then. Who from? Tell me. Charlie Orm. Charlie Orm, yeah. Charlie came on my course a while back, and went on to the Merton College of Guitar Making, and ended up becoming the teacher. <laughs> so maybe. Um, he now runs the course for the people be beginning to build their own guitars yeah. and he started here in the workshop so there you go um, continues to spread further and wider nice one charlie congratulations on that by the way well done so as we're um, getting older yeah talking of which akila's in the house showing the next generation how to do it oh akila's in the house akila hello akila yeah uh, she says <laughs> happy birthday tomorrow mark oh thanks Right, that's it. I'm going now. <laughs> oh, right, anyway, thank, thank you, you, everybody. If you've Thanks made it this far, Dave. then you deserve a medal. Thank you. Because I, I basically wouldn't watch it. <laughs> that's not true. No, anyway. I'd have hung up ages ago. Yeah, well, Westbourne Dave says... I'm going to rename the channel The Grumpy Guitar Maker. What do you think? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm behind that. The Grumpy Guitar Maker. Yeah. That was that was one of my ideas for the yeah. name of the channel. We've got loads of material for that. The already. Grumpy Guitar Maker. Stories from the Grumpy. Guitar I do Maker. actually love my job. Yeah. What I don't like is standing in front of a camera Whilst talking. I'm talking. Believe it or not. <laughs> and what I hate even more is standing in front of a camera whilst Carol's talking off camera. <laughs> You've got one more comment. Oh, I hate it. Right, can I just tell you that Charles Wagner, who I don't recall him being in the chat before, hello Charles. Hi he Charles. Says, he says, thank you. Make for... sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Thank you for all the great information. <laughs> what about the future of designs? Question mark. New shapes, Ooh. new materials, thoughts, comments? We'll do a whole video on that, eh? The future of design. Mm, that's interesting. After they've banned wood. And, well, B, B and Power says... will all be printed, B, won't they? B Power says he'll still watch whatever. You That's right, we'll birthday. be printing guitars. Happy birthday, happy birthday. I'll be showing you how to print them. <laughs> you still need a designer and you still need a guitar maker to actually make it work. Mm -hmm. Even if you've printed a guitar out or CNC'd a guitar, you still need a guitar maker 
to put it together, um, tickle all the bits to make it work properly like a, a proper guitar, um, like a professional guitar. We want our guitars to feel and play like an old friend, that's what we're looking for. So um, like your old favourite guitar that you've had for 20 years, that is what we're aiming for. So um, yeah, if you're interested in any of that, head over to the website, ignore our banter, Carol. Ignore the banter? Yeah, ignore the arguments and the banter, and just concentrate on the guitar making stuff, all right? Subscribe and like it and all that sort of stuff. I knew it was a bad idea giving her a microphone. Ooh. I did warn you guys, didn't I? I warned you this would happen. <laughs> no, she has it on longer and longer every week now. Oh, cheeky. Listen, roll shooting. So she won't have a camera. She says it's your birthday today in, in New Yeah, it's Zealand. my birthday, so I can do what I want. Listen, a camera is a bad <laughs> idea because you'll just see my face. She won't let me put a camera faces. on her. And you'll be able to read my but lips. But she wants to heckle me from read off camera. my lips. I don't think Happy that's birthday, fair. Mark. I think we should have a poll <laughs> to get Carol a camera. What do you think? <laughs> you'll, you'll, listen, you'll regret it. You really will regret it as a I won't, because then I can look at your beautiful face instead oh, of mine. Such a... <laughs> instead of my ugly mug. Right, anyway. So, happy birthday from all over the world, Mark. Um, it's already your birthday in New Thanks, Zealand. Thanks, guys. Um, oh, it's already my birthday in New yeah. Zealand. Right. And party! Yeah. Yeah, party at Matt's, Matt Tomer's place, actually. I was promised someone I'd show him this cutter, didn't I? Apples. Who was that? You promised somebody what? That I'd show him the cutter. Okay. Uh, that was Roll, I think. Well, I've just got to get it out. I don't mind my own strength putting it in. And then I'm going to go and get bladdered. Because <laughs> it's my birthday. So here's the cutter that I was using. It's a down cut. You see it's spiral. So as it spins, it pushes the wood down. And then it leaves a nice crisp, non-furry edge. Whereas your straight cut, I can leave a bit of a furry edge. And an, an up cut would be the worst, because that would actually tend to lift the grain and you'd have a real furry edge. Um, so yeah, down cut, spiral. They come in all different sizes. They're, they're from Stuart McDonald, Stumac. Okay, but we're guitarmaking.co.uk and um, on that site you'll find everything that you need um, to build guitars, including full-on design and build courses, Carol. So I'm going to stop talking now because, of course, you all know the most important thing is it's my birthday. Yeah, 30, Tony Potter says. Yeah, 30 again, <laughs> as my mum always used to say. 30 again. And um, uh, Roll says, would you like some power shells? I don't know if you could. Yeah, I'd like some. I that would know. be fantastic, we'd as long as it's find... all legal. Yeah, Obviously, we don't want to do anything. We don't want to get anybody into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Least of all ourselves. So don't don't send us anything dodgy. But, um, right, you but yeah, us... that would be awesome. We'll feature it on the, on the live do stream. Do you mind another question? Great. Last question, then. From Hawaii. As it's right. my birthday. OK. So... Um... Clinton. Yeah, what he's saying is he's having trouble with the lines in laying. He's, he thinks his eyes are getting bad, especially with ebony. And chalk seems to help. What do you? What can you suggest? Um, Mark's got the same problem because when you get to thirty. Yeah, I suggest you get yourself one of these optivisors or something similar. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't find mine this morning. Otherwise, I would have been wearing them because the box is empty. <laughs> it's gone. Somewhere in the workshop is my Optivisor. Um, it's got lights built in and magnifying glasses. There are different versions available. Um, I got mine again from Stu Mac, I think. Um, but you don't have to. Optical glass binocular magnifier, it's called. Um, and then you'll, you'll be able to see super close up. That'll do the trick. OK. And of course, yeah, rubbing um, chalk into it, that helps as well. Um, 
Another thing you could do that I've seen people do is use actually white paint, white aerosol paint, spray the surface with that first, and then do your inlay. And then all your lines will come out real crisp black as you scalpel, you'll scalpel through the paint. So you can paint the surface with white paint first and then lacquer it. And then when you, when you sand the surface, you've got to make sure you sand all the white paint off, obviously. And that's another way to do it. Brilliant. Thanks, Clinton. Great question. And thanks to everybody who's made it this far. Uh, hopefully you've all clicked the like button and you're all subscribed. You've all clicked the bell icon. And so we'll see you on uh, Wednesday. Oh yeah, we're going to do an announcement about the old Lockdown Lucy guitar. This is a guitar that we made completely from start to finish on a live stream. And it's the guitar that's featured in the playlist. Build your own electric guitar live, I think the playlist is called. Lockdown Lucy. We're going to be doing an announcement about that on Wednesday. So make sure to tune in and we'll see you then. Most important thing, how many times have I said that, Carol, today? What's the most important thing? You say it. You say it. I, can't I suddenly can't remember anything. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm, right, well, I'll say I'm it 31, you Check see. Check twice, cut once. See you Wednesday, folks. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>